Hi, my name is Laura Graber and I'm a wildlife research technician with the Ohio Division of Wildlife. For the last 15 years, I've been working with human wildlife conflicts in Northeast Ohio. Today, we are going to talk about perceptions versus reality, assisting the decision making process for an urban archery hunting program. This presentation is going to cover the results from a survey that Jeff Westerfield and I put together. The survey was sent by me on behalf of the Ohio Division of Wildlife to multiple municipalities across the state to better understand and help quantify some of the safety related perceptions of an urban deer archery program. Urban areas throughout the nation have seen a steady increase in the population of white tailed deer over the last several decades. Because of this, human deer conflicts are increasing in these areas. Wildlife professionals and city leaders are quickly realizing deer are exceeding their social and biological carrying capacities. Due to municipal ordinances that are set in place, which do not allow hunting to occur, deer populations continue to grow and thrive, allowing deer to cause damage. As a result, Lyme disease, deer vehicle accidents, and damage to landscape plantings are concerns that are shared by communities with urban deer herds. As professionals, we are quick to point at hunter safety data to provide some data to municipal leaders on potential issues of an urban deer hunting program. This is not always an apples to apples comparison when looking at an urban archer. When this research was first set in motion, we wanted to know if other state agencies across the U.S. had conducted a national assessment of urban deer hunting programs. While most states have municipalities that allow urban deer hunting, we could not find any national assessment that has been done. Many wildlife management agencies have knowledge of some programs, but rarely, if ever, do states keep a running list of municipal deer hunting programs in their state and therefore are unable to quantify any issues that arise from those programs. In the last few years, several municipalities throughout Ohio have reached out to the Division of Wildlife for assistance due to their concerns about the increase in deer damage within their cities. This chart shows the progression over time of hunting programs that have started in Northeast Ohio since the inception of a dedicated position to assisting city leaders to develop deer management programs. As you can see in 2017, several municipalities decided to take on deer hunting programs. This map shows the potential for urban archery hunting is large and widespread across Ohio with 940 municipalities throughout the state. Ohio ranks fourth nationally with the number of local government jurisdictions. Wildlife management agencies across the U.S. assist municipal leaders who have concerns over the deer population in many ways. We provide general information about deer and deer management. We give technical guidance on non-lethal tactics to alleviate deer issues. We attend formal and informal city meetings, and we help in establishing an urban deer hunting program. For the first time ever, we did an assessment with municipal leaders throughout Ohio to have a better understanding and help quantify some of the logistical aspects of an urban deer archery program. The purpose of this research is to be able to provide municipal leaders with data so that they can make informed decisions about allowing archery hunting within their municipal limits. This will allow the Ohio Division of Wildlife and other state agencies throughout the U.S. to better assist municipalities who are interested in looking at an archery program. The research that was conducted has two main objectives. The first one is to validate the list of communities in Ohio that allow urban archery hunting, and the second to quantify various perceived issues that may be experienced as a result of instituting an urban deer archery program. There are many perceived issues when it comes to hunting. We often hear things such as, we can't afford to oversee a hunting program, we will be sued if someone gets hurt as part of a hunting program, or we can't just let anyone hunt in our municipality. Sometimes we hear things such as deer will be running around with an arrow sticking out of them or non-target species will be shot. Often a major first hurdle for community leaders is to address perceived issues that will arise from an urban hunting program. These perceived issues in the least delay implementation of an urban deer hunting program 
but may even in cases in the discussion altogether. Having data on the potential for each perceived issue can assist in management decisions and expedite formal processes for instituting urban deer programs. In September 2019, I emailed a letter to Ohio City leaders asking for them to take a survey about the logistics of their archery hunting program within their municipality. The letter was sent to police departments since they usually oversee and enforce hunting within their city. Our records indicated that each of these municipalities allows or has allowed in the past deer archery hunting. The letter explained that the information would help both city leaders and the Ohio Division of Wildlife assist in future program development processes. The short survey consisted of only seven questions and was created using the basic free version of SurveyMonkey. A unique ID number was created for each municipality to allow for anonymous responses. There were several limitations using the free version of SurveyMonkey though due to the number of questions we wanted to research, but we were able to increase the questions asked by using a matrix scale, which you can see here on question six of the survey. The other limitation with using the free version of SurveyMonkey is that I was not able to export data. This made it more difficult to compile the results, but I was able to go through each response and use Excel to sort through the information we needed. Here you will see the timeline of survey development, when it was sent, responses received, and follow-ups. As you can see, the process for developing the survey and collecting responses lasted a few months. The survey was created in August of 2019 while also collecting city leader contact information. On September 20th, 2019, the survey was initially sent to 75 city leaders across Ohio. Throughout the months of October and into mid-November, reminders were sent to city leaders to participate in the survey. I gave them until mid-November to take the survey. The survey was sent to 75 city leaders across the state of Ohio in cities where we thought they allowed hunting. Out of the 75 city leaders that the survey was sent to, 54 responded, which is a 72% response rate. 37 out of those 54 responded on having hunting programs. There is a wide range of population densities as well as a wide range of municipal sizes throughout Ohio that have urban programs. The average community size between the 75 cities that we believe allow hunting is just over 13 square miles. What is more impressive is that the average population density of people per square mile in these areas is more than 1,300. Point is, if there are over 1,000 people in a community that is over 13 square miles within each of these 75 urban areas, most residents likely don't know that hunting is taking place in their backyards or they are not concerned about it. If you remember, I said earlier that 54 city leaders responded to the survey and only 37 said they have hunting programs. There are some municipalities that have only had their programs in place for less than five years. Between all of them, the program years range from two to 30 years. When we add the number of years that they have had their programs for, they have 460 combined years of hunting, which is an average of 12.4 years per city. Now I would like to talk about some of the questions we asked on the survey and discuss the results. We felt it was important to know what effect the deer hunting program has had on the community overall. The options we gave were no effect, decrease in aggressive deer issues towards people or pets, decrease in landscape damage caused by deer, decrease in citizen complaints, and decrease in deer vehicle accidents. Most municipalities have seen a decrease in issues with deer since instating their program. Landscape damage is one of the top complaints from homeowners. However, in most cases, when working with city leaders and police departments, deer vehicle accidents are the biggest concern they have for their residents. And as you can see by looking at the chart above, the biggest effect that a deer hunting program has had on a community overall is the decrease in deer vehicle accidents. 
While we want to see a decrease in all areas, I feel that this one is the most important. Thinking about the previous slide on the effects of a hunting program, we wanted to know the percentage of how many times positive effects occurred for those who experienced them. Majority of municipalities had at least one positive effect since they instituted their program. You can see that 78.4% of programs have had at least one positive outcome. There was no significant correlation between years of having a program and any of the positive effects. This could be due to the perception of the person taking the survey, variable attitudes of the citizens within a municipality, amount of hunting occurring in the municipality, or simply variable results for that locality. One of the biggest reasons for doing this study is to get a better understanding of the types of incidents that are most likely to happen or occur while hunting in urban areas. We asked city leaders to mark the total number of times that they have experienced these types of incidents since the beginning of their program. We wanted to know things like how often do non-target objects get shot, how often complaints come in of a hunter field dressing a deer, and is a hunter being visible to residents an issue? Often we get asked about these situations from city leaders when they are considering allowing hunting, and sometimes these types of incidents are the reason why hunting doesn't occur in urban areas. Taking a closer look at the incidents that have occurred and the likeliness of it happening annually, you can see the possibilities are low. The complaint that was received the most was of a hunter being visible from a roadway, sidewalk, or a house while they were hunting. Even at 16.7%, that is only once every six years. Some of the other situations we wanted to learn more about and how often they occur are some of the most common we see when it comes to hunting. Trespassing is the biggest issue and on average occurs 0.91 times per year throughout these programs. In some cases, there are cities without programs that have people not following their ordinances and hunting regardless. One person who responded explained, since the inception of their program, trespassing has not been an issue with their approved hunters, but all their arrest, charges, or citations have stemmed from people attempting to hunt within their city outside of their program, which is a criminal charge via their city ordinances. A big concern some people have when it comes to hunting is seeing deer running around with an arrow sticking out of it. At 0.43 number of times per year experienced in these archery programs, that isn't too bad. Even as a hunter, this is not something I like to see, but unfortunately it is a reality when it comes to hunting. Also from this study, we found on average 0.87 times per year, a deer that is shot runs off and dies on someone else's property. Most properties that are hunted on in urban programs are small and this situation is likely to occur at some point. When we were taking a look at and considering the different types of incidents that are likely to occur, we also wondered if the longer a program has been in place, do more or less incidents occur? After putting the pieces together, you can see by looking at this chart, it shows the longer a program has been in place, the number of incidents that occur decline. Some of the reasons why this might be and some of the thoughts we had are the efficiencies in program logistics are better as time goes on. The longer a program is in place, the issues get worked out. Most cities probably weed out the bad hunters. This was actually noted in the survey as one of the issues experienced. As the deer population is reduced, programs are likely settling in on a core group of annual hunters. Police departments are probably only allowing repeat hunters that are deemed as safe and follow the rules. More residents might be aware that deer hunting is occurring around them, so hunters are trying harder to be safe. Doing an assessment of program cost compared to the number of incidents, we found that there are more incidents recorded as more money is spent on the program. It seems counterintuitive that if a municipality spends money to facilitate a program that it would lead to more incidents. 
There are a few reasons why this may be. If the city is spending money on a program, then chances are police officers are doing more checks on hunters. Therefore, they are bound to find or deal with more incidents. Since they are spending money on personnel expenses, the hunting program in that city is more likely regulated. And also, hunters are most likely required to report to the police department. In cities where hunting programs are regulated, they cost money to maintain. To help city leaders have a better idea of what it costs to run a program, we asked how much does it cost annually in personnel expenses for the municipality to allow deer archery hunting. Personnel expenses most likely include the time that the police or city officials take to do background checks on hunters, bow shooting proficiency tests, and on-site checks at properties where hunting is going to take place. From the data gathered from the 37 municipalities with programs, the longer a municipality has had a program, the less amount of money they spend to run it. This is likely due to a learning curve and having to spend less time on hunters who hunt annually in their programs. Note by looking at the chart that only four municipalities spend a higher amount of money annually and their programs have been in place for less than eight years. From our learning experiences with having several urban programs and conducting this research, some management implications that we recommend to other wildlife professionals is to maintain a list of municipalities that have hunting programs, as this can be valuable. This builds a report with city leaders and allows for data collection and analysis of urban deer hunting. Survey your programs periodically. This shows that the state wildlife agency wants to provide data in a collective way with municipalities. Create data collection protocols for municipal leaders in your state. This research that we did was a good first step towards collating data on urban archery programs within a state. Refinement and collaboration with other states can help increase the available data. Taking the time to educate municipal leaders can provide them with a better understanding of hunting in general. Based off of our research, some management implications we recommend for municipal leaders is that by instituting an urban archery program, it'll likely have positive effects for the residents, but the effects may be variable and may not meet all residents' expectations. Size of the municipality doesn't matter. There is a wide range of municipal sizes and population densities, so lean on similar municipalities and their program logistics. Give the program time to grow. Realize the longer the city has a program, the fewer issues that'll be experienced. Rely on long-standing programs to assess their logistics. Program costs shouldn't be a barrier. Programs can be run at very little expense to the municipality. However, investing resources into the program may have long-lasting effects and be worth the money spent. Communicate with data. Use data to show archery hunting isn't as dangerous as it is perceived. Be open with residents. Educate both residents and fellow municipal leaders on perceived issues and relay the data on perceived issues early in the discussion process. As wildlife professionals, when we conduct research, we are always trying to think of ways to get better data. The Association of Fish and Wildlife Management Agencies document for managing deer in populated places was a good first start to get information to wildlife professionals and municipal leaders, but we still have a lot of room for growth regarding this topic. We should continue to use scientific data to back up the aspects of urban archery hunting. Some of the future research needs that we need to consider when it comes to urban deer programs is to quantify various effects with data rather than perceived effects. It is not known to what level municipalities keep detailed records of issues experienced. We simply asked for the perception of those issues from the person taking the survey, but that person may not have been in the position of overseeing the program for many years. Assess program logistics. The survey looked at only perceived issues and the financial aspects of the program. However, there are many other logistics that go into these programs and having an understanding 
of those can further assist with the implementation of future urban archery programs. Expand the data set. Roll survey out nationally or in the least, each state compiles similar data from the municipalities in their state. Wording in the survey matters. Don't rely on wildlife jargon to be received the same by municipal leaders. Additional surveys can be of value. Surveying hunters involved in the programs as well as residents can add to the full understanding of the value of an urban archery hunting program. Lastly, I would like to thank the cities that participated in our survey. Without them, this research would not have been possible. Thanks to our dear program administrator, Mike Tonkovich, for reaching out to states and organizations about their urban deer programs, and Joe Ferrara for putting together the list of city leaders to contact. My supervisor, Jeff Westerfield, deserves a huge thank you for helping with this research. Thank you for your interest and time. My contact information is provided if you wish to contact me.